I appreciate it, Mr. Chairman. Um, thank you, witnesses. It's been a, a full, uh, full length hearing here with uh, many members. Um, I just um, I'll narrow my questions down a little bit here to uh, um, issues of uh, security. Uh, Mr. Salufo, uh, bottom line on uh, the, the amount of data that uh, a, a Chinese company can be collecting uh, on our transit systems there. That, is that, that's fully expected to be sent back to uh, mainland China and uh, used in their intel systems, right? I mean, we fully expect that that's going to be. That is a major concern, yes, as General Keith Alexander, then director of the National Security Agency, referred to it as the greatest transfer of wealth in, in our history, so intellectual property theft. There's no reason to believe that that won't happen. No reason. I mean, obviously, you want to agnostic to everyone. You want to put in all the right security controls you can and standards. And, and most importantly, here's the reality. The threat moves so fast, technology changes, that you've got to be testing your systems all the time, red teaming and looking for vulnerabilities. Don't expect I mean, if you, if you legislate a law right now that tries to uh, handle security itself, not the importance of security, it's going to be out of date by the time the ink dries. So you want to consistently probe and test uh, uh, our systems, and, and that's maybe where the mandate should be. To, to, hack, to hack proof them, et cetera? As much as you can hack proof them, yes, or at least minimize the impact and consequences when the inevitable occurs, they are hacked. But if we're bringing them in to be the manufacturers and installers that's of these systems, yes. then they're, they have free access. They don't have to hack. That's, that's right? the and concern. There's, there's no way we can ensure owners. that. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, Mr. Paul, when we're talking about um, uh, you know, rail cars, for example, or any product built in China that, or ostensibly start to be built in China and only assembled here, Let's talk about rail cars, and I'll also throw this to Mr. Washington as well. Um, what, what kind of, you know, bottom line, if, if, the, if the bidders are looking for savings involved by using Chinese-made products as over American-made, what, what kind of savings, percentage-wise or dollar-wise, are you looking at for a transit rail car? I mean, what, what are you really saving at the end of the day? And I come from Northern California, where. Uh, only a couple hours from me is the Bay Bridge, which, um, you know, the cost overruns on that right. were something else, but also immediately as, it, as they're building it or immediately after it was deemed ready, they're talking about quality issues with bolts and type of metal and the way it was, uh, way it, the metal was uh, initially uh, uh, manufactured. So, you know, compare all those things, please. Yeah, well, and I specifically remember the Bay Bridge example because California taxpayers essentially subsidized uh, an enterprise in China, in Shenzhen, to begin a bridge building uh, exercise that resulted in cost overruns and delays and ultimately didn't deliver what it promised. Uh, with respect to CRRC... I know people that won't drive across the bridge. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I'm, I'm not scared, but... You in know. addition to the traffic, the, the safety. So, yeah. yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so uh, CRRC entered the U.S. market uh, a few years ago, first in Massachusetts, uh, and it won a contract after combining with another company that was another Chinese-owned company that was disqualified from the from the from the bidding process, um, and it it undercut every bidder. Uh, it then quickly secured contracts. Uh, in, uh, in Philadelphia, in Chicago, uh, in Los Angeles, and I, I think the, the representative from Los Angeles said that the, you know, the bid was, was, could have been 10 percent under. Uh, in some cases, it was tens of millions or even hundreds of millions of dollars less than the next lowest bidder. And CRC was able to do this because it's a loss leader. Uh, this is not a profit-making enterprise. This is uh, a tool of Chinese state power. Uh, designed to build an industrial capacity and dominate a market. Uh, I'm going to run out of time here real quickly. So bo bottom line, what do you, and then Mr. Washington, how much, what initial savings for those that are tempted by that bid would they see? Just a few seconds, please. Um, well, how, on just paper, a, just a rough it could number. be yeah. up to 30 or 40 yeah. percent. Uh, yeah. That yeah. may not be the case down the road, as you've mentioned, as, but it, it, it can be quite sizable. Okay, Mr. Washington, please. 
Yeah, I, I would just say that, uh, first of all, current uh, federal procurement rules don't allow public agencies to disqualify uh, a CRRC or an SOE or an SOE-influenced um, uh, agency. Uh, I would also say, and I mentioned earlier, that the delta between the CRRC and the second bidder was between 5 and 10 percent. It was actually 3.5 percent. Um, but I, I think uh, in our case, um,